Right everyone, pay attention. Today is going to be a history lesson and we're also going to find out about the latest advancements in air gun technology. How we go from this, a Mark I, to an M3. So there's going to be lots of things to discover. So take notes, sit down, get comfortable, lots of things to learn. Silvio, please stop throwing your old bits of pizza at Bob. He doesn't want them. Nobody wants them. And Fred, stop showing your book of drawings to Anthony. It upsets him, look, and he's already hiding under his desk. Come on, Anthony, stand up, be a big brave boy. Oh, you already are. Anyway, shall we carry on? Lesson starting, we're in session now. On March the 17th, 2015, I first showed the Mark I Impact at IWA in Germany. And who knew what was going to happen? In the next six years, this rifle has become possibly the biggest selling air gun in the world. It's had a few updates and incarnations along the way, like the Mark II, but now it's the M3. And it's got a whole host of updates many of which shooters have been asking for while retaining its basic platform. Other than the form factor, the M3 is nothing like the Mark I. So what are the updates over every other version? Firstly, let me point out, I have both the US version, or UK FAC in 30 cal, and the Sub-12 UK 177 version. There are bits the UK subversion does not have. We have laws, you know. At 10, the 480cc bottle can now be a 580cc bottle, which is standard on the 700 sniper model. At 9, the ambidextrous cocking lever. Yep, now you can swap the cocking handle right to left. And that block is spring-loaded. No rubber balls to guide it home. At 8, Tolerances, no more magazine wobble. It's a tighter fit and you will notice it. At seven, the magazine is bigger. Yes, we had this before, but I just wanted to put that in. At six, 20 MOA top rail. These air guns shoot further, so giving the scope a little tip at the front helps to utilize that extra range. At five, the cocking handle. It's shorter, fatter, and smoother. Shoot it, there is a difference. At four, wiki gauges. Yep, FX addresses the gauge issue. Two new gauges for the second reg and the bottle gauge. Better quality, and they look good too. At three, the power plenum. We saw it last year, but now it's bigger, 72 cc's and that's more power than ever before. At two, it's double regulated now. The Maverick did it first, but FX came up with a connector system that has a two-way regulator built in. Others, I'm sure, will now do that. At one, it's the quick tune system, a micro adjuster and a macro adjuster giving a tallest adjustment to power. No more A, B, C or one, two, three. It now makes sense. And with that system, as long as you know your second reg pressure, you can share your tunes to everyone around the world. And the valve adjuster, well, the rubber ball is gone. It's upgraded and much easier to turn. Hoorah! I must not forget, Yes, you can of course still swap liners and yes, calibers can be changed using a barrel kit and probe to the caliber you want. So we could call that sort of 1A. Right, let's split this into two parts. Firstly, I'm going to cover the USA Power High Power FAC. Check the index below for where we skip to the sub 12 foot pound version, but that one is coming up in the video. 
The version I have here is the 600ml with the 480cc bottle and superior liner in 30 cal. It arrives in a foam cut hard case with factory moderator, quick fill adapter, magazine, and instruction manual. All the other bits you see bolted on are extra and are either Sabre Tactical or Donny FL, like that bit there. And they fit the M3 as they did with the Mark I and Mark II. Questions, questions, questions. Okay, what do I know? Well, firstly, the bottle has a valve pin bushing. So no, unless you have that bushing in situ, you cannot swap your older bottles onto the newer M3, but bushings are available to purchase. The first regulator is designed to be a drop-down reg. It eliminates regulator creep because one regulator cannot do all the work. Holding back 250 bar and still shooting is no longer the standard high power shooters or accurate shooters want. Two regs are the next level. But FX does not recommend you go adjusting that first reg. It says so in the manual. However, you and I know we will see YouTubers doing incredible things adjusting that reg. But the manual says don't touch the first reg. That first reg gauge is a standard gauge as it's not designed for tuning, just as a guide. The second reg is the tuning part. And remember, best practice, is remove the bottle to go down in power, clear all the air. You can do a quarter turn and fire safely, it's an amp reg after all, but those extra seconds of clearing the air can save a bent regulator. Turning anti-clockwise increases power. The valve adjuster clockwise will reduce power and counterclockwise will increase it. And it's easy to turn now and it's been spring upgraded. Now, power. Let's be clear, this rifle is open to be tuned, and many, many of you will. Now, we can't talk about power on the M3 unless we talk about this new quick tune system. Basically, the horizontal bar, which rotates, is called the micro adjuster, and the big wheel at the back is called the macro adjuster. Big wheel at the back used to be the hammer spring adjuster, and the little dial at the side was where you used to stick your Allen key in to make changes before. Basically, they've updated that, made it easier to use, added some settings, given it a bigger power variation, uh, and there it is. And it now means that you can read back your settings to people out there in internet land and your friends and tell them where you're at. One thing to point out, you can never adjust the micro or the macro tuner when the gun is cocked. You mustn't do that, okay? So adjusting, with the gun uncocked, okay? So I can tell you that I'm on 150 on regulator one, which is as it came out of the box. I'm on three on my micro wheel, and I'm on eight on my macro wheel, and I'm on 100 on my rear regulator. And my valve is around just above four. And remember, I've got a 600 barrel, and I shoot, and I get around 735 feet per second. And you're gonna say that's low. Yeah, I'll, I'll grant you that's low. But what we can do now is we can go ahead and we can turn the micro adjuster up to five. And then we shoot again. And now we're up to around 865, 868 feet per second. So that micro adjuster has done really big things to the power. And the thing is, is that the gun has settled because it's on a double reg system. That gun has then settled and is consistent within sort of, you know, five to 10 feet per second. And remember, those are 44 grain pellets unweighed. I haven't changed the reg at the back. I haven't changed the reg at the front. I haven't touched the valve. The only thing I've done is dial that micro adjuster and my power has gone right up. So you can see, if you were to open that up a little bit more, it's going to give you a lot more oomph. This one is the 600 barrel. And for me, in this guise, it's a pellet shooter all day long. Sure, it will throw slugs down range, but pellets require less tuning, less adjusting, and give more shots. 
while pest controllers like an instant drop when it comes to 44 or 50 grains of lead flying down range i don't think your quarry is going to care but slugs do retain more power downrange. And yes, they have expansion. Shooting slugs then with the macro wheel on 16 and the micro adjuster on five and the regulator on a hundred. So as you can see, we're gonna need to go up a little bit in that regulator pressure. Nothing else has changed. Rear reg pressure is now approximately 125. So with that second regulator on 125, macro wheel on 16, mini wheel on 5, valve open just past 4, front reg on 150, you can see that the gun has settled to around 920, 930 feet per second of its own accord. Oh, it's up. not my doing, it's doing it itself. It's that double reg system at play. And because I've given you my settings, it means that within a few feet per second around the world, you should be able to replicate what I've got, which is the whole point of this tune system for me, is that everyone out there now, you can share and compare. If you're gonna shoot slugs, I would go with the Sniper model. It comes with an extra 10 centimeters on the barrel. It's a 700 barrel. And that extra 10 centimeters is going to give you around 30 feet per second for no extra effort of the system at the rear at all. You're also going to get a 580cc bottle included. And I would get yourself the optional upgrade of the slug power kit at this end. That's if you're going to shoot slugs. I like shooting pellets. I'm quite happy to shoot pellets. And therefore, I'm going to dial this back to around 840, which is my sweet spot for pellets. Come on! There's a group as well, look at that. Whatever you go for, the power plenum is the largest yet, 72 cc's, and that is going to pre-stage the air for your shot. It works both ways, allows lower reg pressure for more power, and more power from lower air pressure. I think that kind of makes sense. Is it accurate? You bet. 50 yards, it's one ragged hole under a 5p coin with five shots. And it repeats that performance quite happily at 100 yards, all under a 10p coin. So I think the target kind of says it all. 833 feet per second average with 80 shots at that speed from a 250 bar fill the gun will settle over the first 500 shots. You've got to let those regs ease themselves in. However, you can now CMT or copy my tune and see for yourself. Just to be clear, that's down to good wind conditions practice and using the Sabre tactical add-ons for stability at the rear. Also, that's a few hours work and making adjustments to find the sweet spot. Lowest power with best accuracy. You will get through a lot of targets, but at the end of the day, after the exhaustion puts you in your chair, you're gonna sit there with a big happy smile on your face. That dual reg holds back the initial high pressure. When the power passes that first reg mark, it's reverting to the second reg, which is working against lower pressure. This is all so new, but I think it's something we're going to learn to use for our advantage in the future. Right. <laughs> it's a beast. <laughs> Just a beast. This thing is a vaporizer. It just smashes stuff. So pellets, this one is more than enough. Want to go slugging? Go 700 sniper for a few more buttons. But now you can tune, compare tunes, copy others' tunes, and you get reduced reg creep. Now, it's a double regulated gun, and you have to allow that system to breathe like a lung. For speed shooting, go a little higher on power. The system will refill quicker. 
want to slow things down and group like a demon, then lower power is all that's required. You will hear it breathe, that's normal. Will you ever see a semi-auto double regulated rifle? Probably not. That semi-auto is just a lead flinging tool. I said the same about the Maverick. No way of attaching a sling. Also, if this could be in a traditional stock so the wood lovers can get in on the action, that would be incredible. Plus, power kits, they are like gold dust. Maybe we could get even easier access to those here in the UK. That would be lovely. Here's a question. Mark II owners, can you upgrade? Well, maybe the plenum. But the dual reg and micro and macro adjuster? Mm, not so sure about that. Yes, I know, something new came out. But then again, Apple does it every year. So what have I missed? Fully adjustable trigger and blade. Grips, AR style, and they can be changed to aftermarket ones. And the moderator, well, you've got a couple of centimeters of sort of sound dampening or baffling in the end just there but that's a half inch UNF. And if you're not gonna use the factory mod, I would suggest that you do use a moderator on there because it really does make a bit of noise. If you think that's it from the M3, you're wrong. I have more developments to tell you and they're after the sub 12 foot pound section, which is coming up. This is the UK sub 12 foot pound 177 version of the M3. And because we have laws to keep us out of prison, we have to accept the usual limitations. The regs are locked down and the micro adjuster is just not there. Plus no valve tweaks or power plenum. But, and there is a but, that dual reg system has created a laser beam of an air gun. Let me show you. I, I tested it firstly at 25 yards and well, just watch. Right then, this has been the easiest 25 yard accuracy test with a 177 rifle I have ever done. And I'm not joking, this is like, this is my first go. Now, uh, JSB exact, 844s, I got four through the same hole. It's only torn the edge of the paper because of me. I just, oh, so close, and then I did it again right there. I literally just moved a little bit. I can I can see when the shot goes. The only reason that I haven't got five through exactly the same hole right there is because I moved. Simple. It's accurate. Move on. <laughs> 50 yards then, because that was a bit too easy. And uh, watch this as well. Oh, please tell me the camera got that. Please, it looks like it's running. Oh. Oh. Wow. Okay. Now, get this. Those are my zeroing shots. Just two shot zero, dialed. That was it. Then I've got the first group there. And without doubt, there's a flyer. That's five. That's five. That's five. And wait for it. And I've got it on scope cam that's five look look at that can you see that can you see that can you see that 
just there. That is five shots and I've got two through the same hole and it fits under my fingernail. Look at that. Look. Do, do you, can you see the smile? That thing is a laser. <laughs> it's that sub 12, 177, it's a laser. And I said a rude word a moment ago. It's a laser. It's phenomenal. It's just, I'm gushing. I'm sorry. But it's good. I need to be clear, this is from the first charge of the bottle out of the case after around 200 shots to help the rifle settle. I'm running around 775 feet per second approximately. And I need to say again, this whole video section is filmed with the first charge of air. And this is the retail picked off the shelf version, nothing special. Comes in a hard case with a magazine, fill adapter and manual. And it's a laser beam. 500 plus shots from one fill and consistent power. It's an impact but it feels more, looks more, and I'm going to say it shoots better than earlier 177 impacts. I get to shoot a lot of air guns, a lot. Budget through to expensive, and some you have to work to get groups, taking time and patience. This, uh, it just works, and brace yourself FX for what I'm about to say, this requires less tuning than the FAC high power version. It was instant out of the box. I haven't even cleaned the barrel. The Sub-12 M3 does not have the full micro tuning system. However, it does have the new improved macro dial on the side, which can go from 770 and a bit to approximately 598 feet per second. And to the side, it's clearly marked to help you compare and share. The system is based on the Mark 1 and Mark 2 sub 12 foot pound system, but that macro wheel gives better and clearer options. Golden rule for this new macro adjuster is you must not adjust it when the gun is cocked. Okay? I find setting 14 or 15 works well. However, here I'm on 16, and it gives me around 770 feet per second. I do find that I do get shots that go a little bit outside of that. I gotta say, I think it's probably gonna be ammunition based and stuff like that. These are unweighed, and I'm literally just putting them down the barrel as they come out the tin, and you've only gotta have one that's slightly out and it's just going to show up on this gun. So I think ammunition in the future is going to become incredibly important. First one. Touched it. All the bits you see bolted onto my M3 are of course optional extras. But the good news is, is that the form factor hasn't greatly changed. So a lot of the stuff that's out there already will already fit. The M3 is ambidextrous and it's very easy to change it over. First of all, you take out these two very small retaining screws from the top. Then you're going to push out the push pins from below. Now you've got to use something very small to do this. Be super careful that you don't scratch any of that nice black metal work. Then you're gonna simply undo the Allen bolt out of the side lever, because what we actually need to do is turn this upside down, because it's going to go from right to left. Twist it over, and then go ahead and simply put the bolt back in and tighten up. Then you're gonna turn the gun over and this is going to take a little bit of doing. I would admit you've got to go very gentle and you have to push the push pins back in. 
the same way that they came out. And I found that doing the front one first was easiest. And then I would be honest, the one at the back did put up a little bit of a fight. But in the end, you will get it done. And then all you need to do is replace the two top screws back in the top. And then you've gone from a right-handed to a left-handed Impact M3. What have I missed? Well, the trigger is fully adjustable, as is the blade. The grips can be swapped with other AR styles. On the Sub-12 500 barrel, you've got approximately 14 centimeters of space here and this works as kind of a moderator itself. However, you do get the moderator included with it. If you want to add a custom mod on the front, you can because it's got an easy half inch UNF thread on the front. And if I just unscrew this, I can show you roughly how much space you've got inside. The bottle has an extra bushing in the stem, so it cannot be swapped with earlier bottles but bushings can be bought as an add-on. There are a lot of preppers out there that have air guns stored for just in case. And let me tell you that should there ever be an electromagnetic pulse, you don't need to wrap this in lead or tin foil or anything like that because it requires no power. All you need is a pump and some pellets and it's gonna keep putting food on the table for you. Should anyone ever actually fire a rocket with an electromagnetic pulse on it. I keep looking. One thing that is going to make people hop and lose their minds, the safety. It's switched round. I think this is due to the new porting inside. Now, it's different. An FX say something is coming so that you can add on and change it whichever way round that you desire. If you're used to the impact style, yes, it's different. But before shouting and screaming and all that starts, how about you let FX release the add-on? It's been asked for in testing and it's coming. FX have not finished. Oh, no, 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 no. As I keep alluding to, I can reveal the following. Dual transfer ports. One side is labeled P for pellets turn it round and you get a bridged hole for slugs all in one brass insert so you don't have to keep changing them mm. carbon fiber sleeves for the liners and that will help to stiffen the barrel and to work in conjunction with the fx integrated harmonic tuning shroud say what yep FX, in conjunction with Chris Turek from Up North Air Gunner, are bringing you a harmonic barrel tuner. This has never been seen before in an air gun and will allow unparalleled harmonic tuning of the barrel. Integrated directly into the dedicated shroud, still allowing the addition of a moderator. For me, I think this is going to be the product of the year. Now, I have seen 600 and 700 mil units. Sub 12, I'm unsure, but let's scream for them. Powder burners have been using these for competition for years. But Chris and FX have now adapted it for air guns. Imagine dialing your groups smaller. At last, the FX digital gauges are coming and they look fabulous. Would be good to see the second reg from the side rather than below. So now with the M3, the add-on bracket, you can mount a gauge on the side. Oh yes. You will need to quieten that all down. So how about a dual shroud system to make everything extra quiet? Plus to tune all that, you'll need a chronograph. So how about an external screen that can be gun mounted rather than your phone or on the bench. But wait, that chronograph, it's in a box. How about integrating it? So how about putting it inside a moderator and making it Bluetooth and making it so it could fit things non-FX? This 
could be product of the decade for air gunners. So as you can see, 2021 is going to be exciting. Wait times, well, some stuff is coming online in the next few weeks, because I've seen it, and some in the next few months. But FX wants you to know what's coming, and I guess they want to show you where the ideas came from before it gets copied, because it will. That really is it now. I think I'm all done here. Prices, uh, yes. Well, expect to pay a few more buttons and bananas than the current Mark II. That has to be expected. This video is up for years, so I am not quoting anything. You all have access to Google. Otherwise, how did you get here? Talking about money, I know it's not in everyone's budget. I get that. But then I want a Ferrari like this one, but I can't afford one. But these are the F1 or IndyCar of air guns. And I guess that's what we aspire to. But FX air guns have just dropped an EMP. Things are again changing. This is 2021, and it's taken six years to get to this. Can you imagine what 2027 is going to be like? If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up and ring the bell for further notifications of the latest stuff in the airgun world. I'm not the most efficient in uploading because these videos actually take several weeks to make. And I do actually test the guns and shoot them before I show them to you. Please check out airgun101.com for the best new airgun videos from the best creators in the world. And also please check out airgun101shop.co.uk for the hottest gadgets. Thanks for watching. And I can safely say now that after two weeks, I can wash this shirt. Oh. Cheerio. Mm.